Dr. Steve Nissen, in Department of Cardiology at the Cleveland Clinic, and I'm here with two experts in valvular heart disease. And what we're going to talk about is how does a patient know when they need valve surgery? So let's talk about the two kind of major categories: uh, surgery on the aortic valve, surgery on the mitral valve. So for either of you, when should a patient begin to think about having a procedure for their for aortic valve disease? So I'm, I'm Brian Griffin. Um, I'm a cardiologist who deals with valve disease all the time. And it isn't as easy as you might think uh, for the patient because often years ago we waited until people were quite symptomatic before we intervened on, on valve disease and uh, particularly in aortic valve disease. But as we've gotten better results from the procedures, and as the mortality and risk goes down, we've discovered that waiting and waiting and waiting until somebody is quite symptomatic and, and quite sick isn't necessarily the best thing for long-term results. And when we're talking about long-term results, we're talking about people living a very long time after the procedure. So increasingly, we are watching people much more closely than we did in the past, seeing them more frequently, and often we're using blood tests to some degree, but more often the echocardiogram and even a stress echocardiogram to try and most appropriately time surgery. So from that point of view, I think for the patient it's hard because they may not be feeling that sick or symptomatic, Steve. And so they, but developing a good rapport and relationship with uh, an expert cardiologist in this area, I think is something that will pay dividends long term for a patient because they will get, hopefully get disinterested advice as to when is the best timing for them. And they really do need to see somebody with a lot of experience. This is not a place for people to dabble. It's really where you really want somebody who pretty much lives this on a regular basis, don't you? Because it can be subtle making these, these calls. It, it is, and, and the, uh, the, the game is changing quite quickly. and. You really need somebody who's up to date with what the, the current, what's, a, what's currently available in terms of the types of interventions that are available and who is sophisticated enough to understand some of the newer imaging and, and other testing that we can do. So, uh, so I think, yes, it's, uh, it's not the, the uh, good old country uh, GP mm. is probably not the person anymore who really should be making these decisions. Now, some of this is, of course, driven by improved results from surgery. And uh, so what, what should people expect uh, who are going to get surgery early on when they're still in relatively healthy, or in good shape? And that's just the key point. And a plug for early referral, especially for the mitral valve, we do about 1,200 mitral valve operations per year here at the Cleveland Clinic. Fully a third to half of patients are referred too late. They feel good, but their ventricle is already enlarged, which means they already have some heart damage. Come early before the heart's damaged, and then what to expect? Many people can get a robotic approach to the mitral valve, an incision, something like this big on the side, recover quickly, don't look like you had heart surgery, and it's a very nice technique in appropriate patients to get an outstanding result with a quick recovery. And of course, for the aortic valve, some patients, many of them are candidates now for having this done through a catheter, you know, in a less invasive procedure without opening the chest. And uh, that's really been a bit of a game changer in terms of the timing and, and results. Absolutely, Steve. I think the, the results have gotten better and better. Our results here are incredible. Um, but I think people need to realize that although this is a great technique, it isn't for everybody. Um, there are specific categories that the new valves, the catheter-based valves, aren't really ready for yet, such as a very leaky aortic valve or somebody who has born with two rather than three leaflets in their, at their aortic valve. They have a so-called bicuspid aortic valve. They may not be as appropriate for a catheter-based valve as compared to a surgical intervention. So those nuances are very important. And I think, again, it's a reason why uh, turning to a, a center that has a lot of experience and 
uh, cares about these things a lot is, is really important. Well, and of course, one of the things, as I, as I know, and I think everybody should know, is that we have teams that are very experienced at both the surgical uh, valve operations and the less invasive catheter-based operations. And, and they talk with each other. You know, we, we sort of stand shoulder to shoulder, and together we make a decision with a patient in an informed way about, you know, should you have the less invasive procedure? What are the upsides? What are the downsides? And, you know, I would just add that, and I've counseled many patients myself, you know, you want to be at a place where both options are done very well and where the teams talk to each other and figure out together what's the best, best thing to do. So valve surgeries come a long way. Uh, and for, you know, for those of you that have valve, valve disease, uh, keep in mind that modern techniques can get good outcomes. Uh, people go home relatively quickly, whether it's be surgery or, or non-surgical approaches. And so we've made a lot of progress and uh, you know, get seen early, make sure you've got the right people involved. And thank you very much for watching.